What are the different ways of deploying your app to Kubernetes? What are the pros and cons of each one of them? And which one should you be choosing? Hey guys, it's me, your tech bud, and in this video, we'll see why your microservices need GitOps. I'm gonna be presenting a slightly different perspective today. So let's start by doing some groundwork. The most basic way of deploying configuration to Kubernetes is using kubectl apply. Just put a bunch of configuration objects in a single file and kubectl apply it. This is definitely the easiest option, but it's got one major problem. Let's say I've defined my application using three config objects a service, a deployment, and an HPA. I put these objects in a single YAML file and run kubectl apply. As you may expect, kubectl will go ahead and create those objects in Kubernetes. But now I realize that I don't want an HPA. So I remove it from my config file and reapply it using the same command. What do you think happens? Ideally, we want the HPA object to get deleted from Kubernetes. But in reality, it doesn't. It's almost like kubectl chose to forget about the HPA resource completely. So now that object is left dangling till someone remembers to go ahead and delete it. Now that's a problem. The core issue here is that for kubectl, the unit of deployment is a single object. It doesn't really understand the relationship between the three objects we had deployed together. It doesn't know that they are part of the same application. So removing an object from the file makes kubectl oblivious to it. Now this forces us to think about deploying config in a procedural way. As in, I need to make sure I use kubectl apply to add or modify objects and use kubectl delete to remove them. What I'm trying to say is, Kubernetes is declarative only at the object level. You will have to get procedural when dealing with multiple objects. That's totally unacceptable, since it kind of beats the purpose of the Kubernetes API. We need a way to group up multiple objects and deploy them as a single package. This is where Helm comes in. Helm is an amazing package manager for Kubernetes. It's got a ton of features which we'll probably get into in a subsequent video. But what we are most interested in right now is its ability to deploy multiple objects as a single package. Helm calls these packages a chart and the application deployed via these charts is called a release. As you may expect, if you remove some config object from this chart, Helm will detect the change and go ahead and delete the object from our cluster. In fancier words, Helm lets us deploy packages in a declarative way. Problem solved. Order has been restored. So let's party? Hmm, not so soon. The thing is, Helm is a package manager for a single app. And let's face it, we wouldn't be using Kubernetes for just one application. Unfortunately, Managing multiple Helm charts is still fairly procedural. It's the exact same problem we face when doing kubectl apply. Helm's goal in life is to manage a single application and that's it. To be fair, there are some hacks by using the subcharts feature. So you can group all your apps as a subchart to some kind of a master chart. This will technically work, but it causes a lot of duplication. It is very restrictive and most importantly, it doesn't feel natural. I mean, let's just not use tools the way they were never intended to. Can we agree on that? Thanks. So where were we? Yeah, we needed a declarative way to describe all our apps. To get into that, let's try and understand how Helm works under the hood. Whenever you install a package using Helm, it goes ahead and creates a revision for that release. As you may have guessed, each new update is followed by a new revision. A revision is nothing but configuration stored in a secret or a config map object. It holds metadata of the different kinds of objects that were deployed by that release. So whenever you try to update a release, Helm looks up the existing revision, does a quick recon to figure out what needs to be done, then goes ahead and adds, updates, and even deletes objects based on it. One point to note is that the entire reconciliation process is done solely for Kubernetes objects. So in order to make this work for all our apps, we need to represent the Helm release as an object. This object will be pointing to the location of our Helm chart along with the various values that needs to be passed as input to that chart. Let's call this object an application. The controller backing this object would be responsible for running Helm install whenever a new instance of that object is created. It will run Helm upgrade whenever there is a change and finally, run Helm uninstall when that object gets deleted. Can you guess where I'm going with this? 
So we can now create a master Helm chart whose sole purpose would be to install one application object for each app we want in our cluster. So if tomorrow I want to add a new app or remove an old one, I can simply make changes to this master Helm chart. As we discussed, Helm already manages reconciliation of objects. So it will add, update and delete my application objects in the cluster to reflect all my changes done in the Helm chart. Finally, thanks to our application controller, changes in these objects will result in Helm commands being fired. This way, we can describe the state of our entire cluster declaratively. This is exactly how Argo CD works. The application object I spoke about, that's the Argo CD application object. And the backing controller that was running all the Helm commands, that was Argo CD itself. Lastly, the weird Helmception that we just saw, it's called the App of Apps pattern. It's the Argo CD way of declaratively defining the state of our entire cluster. Just to be clear, Argo CD has its own recon process. It's not really running Helm install or Helm upgrade. So we don't really need to rely on Helm ourselves. Argo CD will still work if you point it to a directory where we have a bunch of raw YAML files. The same things that we saw towards the start of this video. Sorry about that. To be honest, you should never use Helm to package your apps anyways. But that's a story for another day. This is probably a good time for you to subscribe. Meanwhile, feel free to speculate why Helm is back for your apps in the comments below. I'm curious to know what you think about it. Now before you guys go ahead and boycott me, let me add this. Helm is still probably the best way when it comes to deploying third-party applications. It's just irreplaceable when it comes to that. Now after digesting all of that, I'm sure you're wondering, when does the Git of GitOps comes in? All that we discussed today has nothing to do with Git. This includes Argo CD as well. Argo CD can achieve all what we discussed today without using Git. Just hear me out before you unsubscribe. Practically speaking, describing the state of our entire cluster is going to require a lot of config files. And why stop at a single cluster? Defining the state of our entire system across all environments is going to be a bit overwhelming. And with more and more of us adopting continuous delivery, this avalanche of configuration is constantly changing. And it doesn't end here. Different teams would want to work on different parts of this configuration simultaneously. Just thinking about coordinating all of this gives me a headache. Does this sound familiar? We faced a similar challenge of velocity and collaboration when writing code for our apps. So how do we solve this issue with our application code? By using Git. Git is a version control system which gives us so many advantages. And now that our infrastructure code is getting so complex, it just makes so much sense to store all of this in Git. And technically speaking, Git is a great store for declarative config. Just pulling the latest commit ensures that what you see in your editor is exactly how things are in your production environment. That's a powerful realization. Moreover, Git can also store the changes which have happened in our cluster with respect to time. Every commit replays the state of our cluster at that point in time. This makes achieving rollbacks so much easier, especially for microservices where a single service actually depends on other services for normal operation. This is what we mean by Git acting as the single source of truth. This is what GitOps is all about. I know I could have simply mentioned all of this at the very beginning, but to truly understand the importance of GitOps, one needs to appreciate the complexities involved in defining the state of a microservices-based system. Let me know in the comments if you agree with me. Having said that, deploying your services is just one part of the story. Making them auto-scale on demand is a completely different ballgame. So how do you do that? Well, check out this video to know more. Like, share and subscribe if you found this video to be helpful. And don't forget, I am your tech bot. You're on YouTube and hopefully in real life.